Oof. <laughs> it is uh, minus four degrees here in Iceland and I am freezing. And I was just thinking to myself, how soft I've gotten living in Portugal that minus four is cold. I used to kind of brag on these trips that it'd be like minus four and I'd be out in a t-shirt. I can't do that anymore. I'm freezing. And to be fair, I did forget my thermals. Yeah, I'm definitely getting soft living in Portugal. Anyways, I am in Iceland, not in Portugal. And we will get to Iceland. But first, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Squarespace is an amazing place for photographers and bloggers to build a really professional looking website really quickly and easily. It has a lot of templates that make it simple to get started. You have great resources too, like members only areas, easy to build stores for selling arts and even services. Of course, there's also lots of other great tools for creators such as a logo maker and in-depth analytics. So if you're looking for a photography website or portfolio, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. Link in the description. Now, on to explore Iceland. So first stop, of the trip is an attempt at sunrise on the Snaefels Nest Peninsula. I've come to this location uh, a, a number of times. It's this really cool arch rock that sometimes gets hammered with waves, but I've never really gotten great light here. So we kind of got up really early to try to make it for sunrise. But of course it's a little bit overcast, quite overcast, and it seems like actually it's gonna get worse. There is some definition in the cloud off in the distance. So we'll see what happens. This is one of those locations that's always frustrated me. It's perfectly beautiful, but for some reason, it doesn't always come through right on the camera. The contrasts are heavy and the angles are a bit strange. I tend to struggle here. The arch is cool, it really is. I've photographed it so many times and it looks beautiful now, but the conditions just aren't perfect for it. And one of the advantages of coming back to a place so many times is you can move away from something so cool and go and look for some other stuff. So I'm gonna go look for some other stuff. There's all this fresh snow that must have fallen last night and this black rock. And I think the contrast of it just looks phenomenal. So I'd love to find a way to incorporate, you know, both of that. The waves are crashing up on it, clearing off the snow and leaving just this beautiful black rock. So I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, but I'd love to find a seascape scene from up on these cliffs that shows off the different colors, the white snow, the black rock, and then the like teal green sea. So let's see what we can do. An umbrella of white cloud has us covered in soft light. The air and seas are calm. Neither the light nor the sea feel overly intense. It's not punchy, but I'm hoping to find a way to add some mood, texture, and drama to the scene. Okay, so I'm doing something a little bit different than I, I expected to do and that I've been doing a lot of lately. I used to do a lot of these really long 30, 60 second exposure dreamy scapes in places like this and kind of got away from it to do more half second exposures to get more drama. But there's not a lot of drama in the sea today. It's pretty flat, but there is sea foam along the edges. And with a really long exposure, it does create this really dreamy mood to the images. The sky has kind of died now a little bit, but it was blasting through this really nice bouncing, reflecting light, refracting light, and creating these purples and oranges in the sky that looked really beautiful. So I've been doing something different. I've been doing dreamscapes. I've been using a 10-stop ND filter, a three-stop hard grad for the horizon, and then photographing like 30 second exposures of this scene. And the images are coming out really, really nice. And it's kind of a reminder that you don't always need the drama. You can create your own drama with a longer exposure. So this has been fun and I'm gonna keep looking around for some more images like that. On the first bend, I find a couple of images, a wide horseshoe of snow and sea. 
then a square crop of a slightly more narrowed scene of basalt sea stacks. Sometimes photography is about recreating the world as you see it. Sometimes it's about recreating the world's mood as you feel it. It feels calm outside, but the mood is dramatic, dreamy, and intensely powerful. I gotta be honest with you, I'm having a lot ooh, of trouble standing up. I'm having a lot of fun. So many times I've come to this location and just stayed at the arch and photographed it to death. And yes, there's a cool image there right now because the light has gone really beautiful in the background. But I think I've taken four or five images I like here. A lot more than images I've taken that I like of the arch. I'm really loving these long exposure, dramatic, dreamy images with the fresh snow and the black rock and the really colorful sea. And I've come to the end of the trail and found this scene, which is just absolutely beautiful. You've got waves crashing up and then retreating. You've got the like almost stuccoed black rock with snow on it, fresh snow, and then the light is really beautiful. So I have done some long exposure stuff, some 30 minute, ex 30 second exposures, but I think I'm actually gonna switch and do a faster exposure here, maybe a half a second or a full second, now that there is a bit of drama, and I'll show you the difference between the two because there is obviously a, a big difference in the mood of that image. Yeah, I, like I said, I've come here a dozen times, half dozen times, and never have I given this part of this area, this part of the coast, nearly enough credit because it is absolutely awesome and I'm having so much fun. I continued to work the coast with long exposure photographs. I swear, I could spend all day here playing with light and contrast like this. And the coast feels like it's starting to get wilder and some weather is brewing. For now, it helps shape the drama and adds texture to my skies. Eventually, we move on to a new location and a blanket of snow and wind takes hold. Then as quickly as it came in, it peels off in time for another photo. So we've gone a little bit farther onto Snaefels Nest Peninsula. Absolutely awesome spot with sea stacks, crashing waves. We were just absolutely hammered by some like hail or like ice. I don't really know what it was. But again, I messed around with some long exposures. This time I was going about six seconds. You'll hear photographers all the time say things like a quarter second is the right exposure or two seconds is the right exposure. The reality is there's no right exposure time. It's all about what mood you're trying to create. So somebody like me who takes a lot of long exposure photos, I might know right away, okay, this is the type of mood I want to create. I'm going to shoot 30 seconds. But there's no reason why you can't just set up Try a quarter second, try a half second, try a second, five, 10, 30, three minutes, and just mess around with all sorts of different exposures and see what you like better later. You don't need to get it right one time. You can mess around, you can try different things. So I don't know if the five second images worked, but I wanted to capture kind of that trailing of water and the blurry, sea foam around the rocks. That's kind of why I did that. I had an intention behind it. But you don't have to have an intention when you're just learning. Feel free to mess around with the long exposures. Have fun with it. And despite the weather absolutely corking us, <laughs> I'm having fun myself. So let's keep rolling. We then rolled across the Snaefels Nest Peninsula towards an Icelandic classic. Okay, so we've made it now to somewhere a little bit more classic. 
trying to find somewhere the wind's not so bad. Uh, we're near Kirkjafellsfoss, but the wind is howling pretty good. And waterfalls are again one of those spots that long exposures are really clever. In fact, it's rare that I see a waterfall photo that isn't slightly long exposure that I find impressive. When I'm talking long exposures, I'm talking things you can't really do handheld. A quarter second or longer. So, yeah, waterfalls are kind of one of the classic things you take long exposure photos of. I like to aim for about a second with waterfalls. But again, it's kind of like how you play it. Uh, I've photographed this waterfall so many times that I want to try to do something slightly different. Got my uh, gum boots on and I might try to get in the water as long as it's safe. So we'll see what happens here. Without much drama in the sky, I was trying to find a way to fill the frame with as much non-sky stuff as possible. Getting low seemed like the right idea. Okay, so I've tried this before and failed because I didn't have a wide enough lens, but as you might be able to tell by this, I have my really wide angle on right now. This is a 14, no, 15 millimeter lens from Nisi. And I'd like to try to scurry around the edge and get right under here on the ice, but I'm a little bit worried of getting wet. So I've got my gum boots up to my knees and I guess the rest is just wish me luck. You'll have to forgive the lack of footage. It was way too difficult to bring my other camera in. So there's no imagery of me making this photo. But believe me, I took it. There is, of course, the photos. What do you think? So the weather's kind of turned on us. It is now a white, white bit of Iceland going on right now. Definitely had fun with long exposure photography on today's episode. And I don't know what we'll do next trip, but there'll definitely be some photography. So I'll see you guys there. Peace.